Look at that, another thing working today. Um, so let me just run through our uh, roll call. So we have Bob Lyons via Zoom. Gayathri Dina Karen is absent. Uh, Don Knorr is here in person. Dan Ramsey here in person. Carrie Schuffner connected via Zoom. Um, Carl Stump here in person and Kendra Wokus here in person. So we have six of seven members present. We do have a quorum. It's after 6.30, so take it away. Then I will call this meeting of the Public Works Committee uh, to order. Uh, the first item on our agenda is the minutes of the February 27th meeting. It's done, I'll move we approve. We have a motion to approve the minutes. Is there a second to Don's motion? Ramsey, a second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion regarding the minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and the minutes of February 27th are approved. All right, next agenda item is Pleasant View Road public hearing. And uh, do I need to call the hearing to order separately? I suppose I do. Uh, uh, that's the top of that agenda item typically. Can I, okay. wait, sorry, can we revisit the minutes from 12, 228? I'm just looking at what was, it, I'm sorry. Can we go back really quick? Um, uh, that's fine. Um, I'm looking at the Pelletary and it says that Norm moves that the committee recommended the Common Council a contract extension to continue solid waste collection. I don't think that's what we agreed to. We agreed to get a bid from them. Oh, absolutely. Okay. So I think it's just bad wording, but as we discussed this with the council, was it last Tuesday? I right. think uh, it was in terms of now we're going to get a proposal. In fact, I was chatting with Pelletary today. Yeah, um, so and I know that's what we agreed that. to. I just want to make sure that the minutes reflect that we didn't agree to a contract extension, that we agreed to get a bid. OK, sure. Can we just make that change? So I'm sorry, Can if we can, I can make a substitute motion to approve the minutes with a small change to what the motion was regarding the Pelletary contract. Well, how, do you want to change the wording of the minutes? Um, to say that we agree on a contract extension contingent upon receipt of an acceptable proposal. Is that what you want to do, Kendra? Is that what we agree? Or, remind me of just, I guess, remind me of this. Is that what we were still waiting to get? Because the whole question was, is we just wanted to get a bid from them. Exactly. And that's part of the process, right? right. So I think that two tacks that I was approaching it from were, do we want to get a contract extension with Pelletary oh, okay. based on their proposal, which okay. we don't have yet, Okay. or do we want to just go to an open RFP and get proposals right. from everybody? Okay. And it was the former. So I think it is that we were interested in a contract extension based on a proposal not yet produced. Right. Assuming acceptable rates. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I guess the wording just is a little... There is a better way to say that. Yep. Do you want to figure out the better way, or shall we uh, go with I, the substitute motion, or shall we leave it the way it re reads in the minutes? I, I can appreciate saying that we're, uh, you know, interested in pursuing a contract extension and adding the phrase based on a proposal not yet produced. Oh. Excuse me. That's why I'm not at the meeting in present. Um, person. and then the rest of that sentence should be fine as yeah. is, I think. Okay. So if you want to make that a substitute motion, that would be fine. That, or if, if you want to just say that's amended. Um, I, I would just say that that's amended and then we'll be fine with it. Okay. So acceptable um, with everybody else. I agree with the amendment. Okay. Dan, right. fine as is. Okay. All right. Sorry. Sorry for missing that when we were talking. No, about very good. On to Pleasant View Road, and I will call the public hearing uh, to order at this point and ask Sean to provide an overview of the uh, project, and then we'll take it from there to hear public comment. Exactly. So I was just scanning who's in attendance on the Zoom call that might be interested in this public hearing, and I'm not seeing anybody. 
um, other than potentially Middleton Review. So uh, get your hand ready. Um, and then we have a couple folks in the audience here uh, this evening. Um, and so let me begin with just a, a sort of abbreviated project overview. I, I don't know, were you folks at the public information meeting last Wednesday by chance in the basement of the in the lower level of the library? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of there was a lot of interest in that. We just had a public information meeting. Uh, a lot of folks showed up, which was good to see. Uh, so I won't belabor the whole thing, but this is for the reconstruction of Pleasant View Road from Timberwolf Trail in the city of Madison up to and through Highway 14 to University Green in the industrial park in the city of Middleton. Uh, it also includes some Highway 14 and railroad work, uh, which Wistad is pursuing with us um, as a highway safety improvement project. So there's uh, a few projects involved with Pleasant View Road itself and then another one with Highway 14, but it'll all be the same contractor all done at the same time. So people won't maybe notice the difference. Hoffman Constructions, our general contractor, the contract oversight is all gonna be by Wistot. Uh, so I still do have some involvement as a city representative, but this is not a city contract. Uh, it's now a Wistot contract. It should have started today. I didn't have time to get out of my office yet today, so I trust that it did start today. Uh, and it's scheduled to be completed by uh, the end of June, 2024. Uh, the work to lower the hill at the golf course is the initial major element of their work. And that is expected to take, I think, eight to 10 weeks for blasting. Um, and so the intention is that that hill section between the golf course driveway and the Lycon driveway should be closed, I think, into November. Uh, of this year. And then the road will, of course, be opened up again for winter travel uh, next, I hate to say next winter, but yeah, next winter. Um, uh, apart from that, really what we're here to talk about tonight is the assessment schedule. So I'll say, while normally our assessment schedule follows a city of Middleton um, policy, for this particular project, because the city of Madison, the town of Middleton and the city of Middleton are all involved, uh, we decided it would be best if we matched the assessment methodology of the city of Madison, uh, because they then by agreement are also assessing some town properties. We do not have a similar agreement with the town of Middleton to assess town properties that would be uh, adjacent to or abutting the city of Middleton project limits. So we've still calculated that benefit and will carry it, but we will not be sending out uh, assessment bills for this project until either there is an agreement with the town of Middleton to allow those assessments or uh, they annex into the city of Middleton. So they'll just sit in a file um, and, uh, and await uh, assessments in the future. Uh, so for the most part, what we're talking about is removing and replacing driveway aprons, that being an accessible cost, uh, installing curb on the one side of the road that the property abuts, and a four-foot width of asphalt pavement for the road widening, uh, installing new sidewalks, and installing street lighting. Those are the guts of the accessible elements. Um, and again, this follows the Madison methodology for calculations. So it's all across the board the same for everybody. The assessments on the schedule that I mailed out are based on actual contract prices. Often we're um, stuck estimating and then refining later, but in this case, we already have contract prices. So we already know how much the assessments uh, will be valued at. And um, I'll just as a high level overview, the total assessments in that schedule are about $375,000 of the $13.2 million project-ish, uh, which is a little under 3% of the project costs being assessed. All the other costs are in our uh, city's TID3 funding. So it's a tax increment district. Um, not general city taxes. Uh, and then costs will be billed after the project's completed. So we'll mail bills uh, 
30 days after, uh, usually 30 days after the project's complete. So again, that'll be next summer, not this summer. Uh, and then the bill has an allowance to be paid in up to seven annual installments, as long as there's a minimum payment of $250. That does have an interest charge. Uh, and I, uh, for those interested, I'll connect you with Bill Burns, the finance director uh, about that. Um, for the most part, I would say as things come up, this is a long and complicated project. Uh, let me know of questions. Um, and then I can best loop in the contractor and WISDOT staff to get an answer back. With, with that, uh, that's kind of the, the presentation. And did you have comments that you would like to make? If, if so, I invite you to go to the podium where the microphone can pick you up. Sean, while that's happening, I had a, had a question. Do I, do I understand that the town of Middleton has reached an agreement with the city of Madison on how to assess these properties that abut the city of Madison? They have an intergovernmental agreement. And okay. one of the parts of that intergovernmental agreement includes um, how to pursue assessments. We just don't have something like that. All right. I just I, I'm I've not gone through one of these uh, before, where we're just kind of putting a whole bunch of assessments in abeyance. If the town of Middleton never consents to have these assessments made, and if there is never an annexation of that property into the city of Middleton, what happens? Uh, well, then it doesn't get paid back. Those are the only two conditions of which I'm aware that would lead to us collecting that money. Is there any, I, I'm sorry to be taking up so much time here, but is there a possibility that liens can be paced, placed on these properties such that if they uh, turn over while those assessments still are not paid, the city can uh, get its assessment that way? I did put that question to our city attorney and the answer was uh, that he doesn't know of any specific document or type of document or specific language, which would have to be, in his opinion, pretty carefully crafted uh, to be a recorded instrument like that, which may require some input and editing from the affected property owners. Um, he was, I think, reasonably confident that it would be something that had to be disclosed to a buyer. Uh, because the sellers are aware of it, certainly, um, but it's not an encumbrance on the property. It's just an outstanding um, amount, but only if it's um, um, brought into the city, really, or we reach an agreement with the town. Uh, so it's not necessarily even going to be the next buyer that might have to pay that. Okay. Yeah, which was not an entirely satisfactory answer, and yet. Um, well, obviously, some people will get a major uh, break on this project. Well, for a while, anyway, right? The um, Pheasant Branch Interceptor Sewer Project is the closest thing I can think of in my time here, where we went um, far beyond uh, what we could assess right now. Uh, but then as some of those properties come in, that becomes an accessible part of that, that annexation slash development. Does interest start then when there's an agreement with the town or an annexation? Or is there interest from the time that we state the assessment amount to the time it gets paid? We have calculated it in the Pheasant Branch Interceptor case uh, from the date of borrowing for the project. So when we're accruing interest on our payments, uh, so are our assessments. Okay. okay. Well, I, I cannot see who is at the podium. So Sean, could you, if, is there if an introduction to be made of whoever is there? Or yeah. Right to hear from that individual? Sure. If, if you would just, into the microphone, say your name, your address, uh, any questions or comments? Sure, my name is Carol Shelton and I live at 6905 North Avenue. Um, I'm friend, friends with Ted Hellickson and he lives at 4377 Pleasant View and 4389. 
so he's impacted by the project. He's from the town of Middleton. He's kind of hard of hearing, but he'll talk, you know. Also, but we were kind of interested to hear what people had to say about the assessments. And um, that last conversation was actually very helpful because, again, he is on the town side and he has quite a bit of property. Mm -hmm. So, how long have you been there? Like 44 seven. years. And it was his wife's uh, property prior to that. They had the family farm there and, you know, they own all the property around there. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing I wanted to bring up myself but i'm not sure if it's part of this project is he will have 440 feet of sidewalk five feet that they say is multi-use by walking whatever and yet i think he's expected to shovel it uh we had brought this up at a city council meeting very early and so here's a person who is a the sidewalks of no value to him <laughs> Uh, necessarily, it's being done as a public service for, and he is, uh, you know, not elderly. We're not elderly, we're older, um, but that's a lot of shoveling. And if it is truly a bike path and you start seeing that's the real value of it, who would be responsible for shoveling that? Sure. I, so there are two things inherent in that. One is it's just a five foot sidewalk like any other sidewalk. So it's not intended as a, a bike path or a multi use path. That drops off where uh, we're planning in a pedestrian overpass bridge at sort of the north edge of the golf course, uh, where that tall uh, electric pole is. Yes, we saw that on the plan. Yeah, so that's kind of the furthest north that the multi-use path is planned to go. Beyond there, it's just five foot wide sidewalk. It always um, says bike path in the things we read, I feel like. There was a double label on, on the roll plot that said this um, cyan colored line is multi-use path slash sidewalk. So where that line is really wide, that's the 10 foot multi-use path. And where that line is narrow, that's just five foot sidewalk. So on that graphic, it was just serving two purposes using one color um, and a double label. But this is just five foot sidewalk by your place. Uh, and then the second question was about shoveling, which is a basic expectation, of course, except that the city has no police powers into the town. So if, if you, Ted, uh, or anybody else living there would choose not to, there really isn't anything I or, or the city, uh, as far as I know, can do about it. They're saying that it's not in their power if you don't shovel that they could do anything. Because you're in the town. Okay. It's just a, like I say, just a concern again, because, you know, that's 440 feet to all of a sudden the sidewalk that he won't yeah. be using. Um, besides the loss of the property, you know, that he's done through the project. So, sure. Nope. Good, good question. I would like to mention um, they came in and they took down a poor old tree on the 4389 property and after they cut it they took a measurement on the trunk and the original year that that tree started growth was 1796 or something it was 229 years old we're estimating it was 35 feet so wow that's that's sad <laughs> that's really sad but it's a thing of the past also. Just an interesting fact that we find amazing. So that is. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there anybody online? Uh, and if so, if you could just please raise your hand in the Zoom call uh, that would wish to speak in the public hearing. <laughs> Uh, I don't see any, Bob. So um, I don't see any either. committee questions, comments. Yes, we could close the public hearing. All right. Well, we can close the public hearing then. I'll declare the public hearing closed, and then we will reconvene uh, the committee meeting at this point. All right. Have a good night. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Thank you. Um,
Okay, well, so then next up on our agenda with that closed would be action on the resolution itself for the final assessments uh, and inherent is that is the uh, engineer's report. Ramsey will move that we approve the engineering report dated 3-2-23 and that we recommend to the Finance and Common Council that they adopt the final assessment resolution contingent upon satisfaction of the city attorney. We have a motion. Is there a second to Dan's motion? This is Kendra, I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion with respect to the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Aye. The ayes have it, and that will be our recommendation uh, to the Finance Committee and the Common Council. All right, next item is concrete repair uh, project award of a bid. Let me bring that down a little. Um, Perfect. And we have Tom Weber with us on the call uh, this evening. And, and Tom has been instrumental in, in putting together bid packages and following this all through for us uh, in terms of the concrete project for many years. So uh, you have the short version on the screen and the slightly longer version in your packets. But uh, Tom, if you want to say anything or if there are any questions of Tom with this, that'd be Good. I just had one question. This is J.B. Johnson Brothers. This is the company we've used for the past several years for these projects, is it not? Uh, that is correct. Uh, the last, I think the last four years, they were not on our docket because of bidding here, but now they're come back here with a successful bid. So we have used them in the past. Okay. Questions, committee members? Does anyone wish to offer a motion? This Scott, I move we recommend the Finance Committee and Common Council the uh, acceptance of the bid from J.B. Johnson and Brothers for the uh, concrete repair project. Thank you. Do we have a second to Don's motion? Ms. Carl, I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Discussion? I, I guess the only thing I would, oh, sorry, Bob. The only thing Go I ahead. would in discussion is we did bid as alternates a couple of side projects that were of interest um, for connecting uh, a, a sidewalk gap along Forsythia and also for um, infill some sidewalk along Murphy but we don't have an identified funding source for either one of those. So we couldn't recommend a word of it. Um, that really came largely in response to a Kiva development up on Forsythia. Um, and we were hopeful of, of seeing if we could get that connected. And then the bus route changes, which will uh, have a stop on Forsythia. And I had um, thought the Forsythia sidewalk had been budgeted, but I guess I... Wasn't that part of the contingency for Kiva to do their their improvement that they were yeah. going to put the sidewalk in there? They they will put the sidewalk in on their frontage, but next to it, it's connecting it. To there's the... a vacant, not a vacant property, but a property without sidewalk right now. Um, so Kiva wouldn't build that sidewalk, and that is not their property. No, it's beyond their property, and yet there's a gap to where the sure. end of our sure. sidewalk is. Okay. Um, with this $110,000, this still leaves us room for, because I see in the memorandum that um, we don't have quotes for the sidewalk raising or, or saw cutting, and that's typically 20 to 30,000. So we have 20,000 left over for that part then. Tom did reserve some money for that, yes. All right, any further questions or comments? Um, hearing none, uh, those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Uh, the ayes have it, and we will so recommend to the Finance Committee and the Council awarding that contract to J.B. Johnson Brothers. All right. 
Okay, Bridge Deck Maintenance, another bid award. And this is also from Tom Weber. Uh, so he uh, actually had put out um, a request for some cost estimating prior to the last budget requests. So he had a, a reasonable handle on scope. Uh, and these are all deficiencies that were identified in our biannual bridge inspections. So the report um, suggested some maintenance activities. This is now uh, just the funding for that maintenance work. All right, committee, questions, comments? Someone feel moved to offer a motion? Ramsey will move that we recommend to the Finance and Co Committee and Common Council award of the construction contract to Farner in the amount not to exceed $164,703.83. Thank you, Dan. Do we have a second to Dan's motion? This is Wilkes. I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, discussion? Hearing none, those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Uh, the ayes have it, and that will be our recommendation on this item to the Finance Committee and the Council. Next item is Pheasant, Pheasant Branch CIPP pipe lining bid rejection. We've visited this once before, as I recall. <laughs> we did. So Tom tried getting uh, bids last fall for this work. And, and frankly, we were kind of thinking, well, over winter when the ground's frozen would be a great time to get in there because it's on the far side of the high school um, ball diamond area. And it's a pipe that drops down that slope into the creek. Um, but based on the single bid received and the amount of that bid, we had no choice but to recommend rejecting it. Uh, and, and we thought, well, we'll try again here now in spring. And Carl gave Tom some contact information from a firm that um, we thought might be more interested. Um, but having, having put it out, we also got one bid also at a really high, unexpectedly high amount. Um, so we're not in a position to recommend accepting this and, and are stuck again recommending rejection. This bid, Sean, is from a different company that bid the first time? Do you recall, Tom, if it's somebody else? No, it's the same company, Busy Store. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. So the bid is about the same as it was last time then, roughly, I assume. I think it was a little. Uh, yeah, it was a little higher because we were also were looking at having them do a manhole. Um, right. Terrace Avenue, but. It was just that was reflected the price difference there. But otherwise, was... how critical is it that this work get done fairly uh, soon? What's the downside of not doing it at all for at least another year? Um, I don't think there's any major downfall to it. Um, the bottom of the pipe is starting to corrode out, and we just don't want to get it to the point where it does fail and uh, they can't line it for us. Uh, that would be the only downfall there but i don't foresee that happening in a year time period here and tony coda did take some information in and he was contacting a number of his clients um, to see if he could maybe get some interest in doing some rebidding for us here so who was that time i missed that the gentleman's name was tony coda i believe that's who carl gave us as a contact oh Is there been any thought of just bidding this as replacing that pipe rather than lining it? I know there are some difficulties with that slope uh, and stuff, but if we can't get anybody to, to bid on lining it, maybe you have to go the other way. Very possible. Uh, the only thing, Mike, there would be is that we get into the side of that, when you're talking that hillside, yeah. is that it's on the back side of that dump that was in the high school property there, and we'd be maybe risking opening that up a little bit. That, yeah, the yeah. Potential there. that could be a significant environmental yeah. issue, right? Yeah. Better off did, they, did, did anybody contact a company that 
that I found that I've used in the past to ask why they didn't price it. Do you know, Tom, why they didn't themselves provide no. a price? No, I did not pursue that. You might at least touch base with them to see what it is about this that that made them right. disinterested. Because it's because this number is like three to four times the rule of thumb cost per lineal foot that they they were talking about. I think yeah. my I estimate based on what they had initially talked about was in the thirty thousand dollar range. Yeah, and that would be for the the spray coating which we allowed to have happen this year. Uh, first one we were looking at is a liner. Uh, the second one was actually uh, where they spray the material on the pipe and coat it from you know the inside there. Um, so we opened it up with that too and hoping to draw them in on it, but uh, they didn't apparently want to bid on it. But that's what uh, Tony was looking at because he deals with the spray liners for those that pipes and he was going to look for anybody that they could on his side of the, the fence there to try to get someone to bid on it. Oh, is that the uh, centrifugally cast concrete? Yes, correct. Okay. Yeah, I could see that working here too. Huh. Yeah, it'd be worth uh, just touching base and saying, hey, you know, we still got to get this done somehow, uh, preferably without open excavation. I, I think that would be hard. Um, and the only other thing I could think of as an option that we haven't really looked at would be. Um, if we have enough slope on that, maybe we could downsize that pipe because it's awful steep. We might be able to slide a plastic pipe into the metal pipe. We'd have to tear the manhole off to do it, but so what? All right, so for the moment, what's before us is rejecting the bid that we received, correct? Correct, yep. Anybody wish to offer a motion? Uh, this is Wilkes. I will make the motion that we recommend to the Common Council that we reject the one bid that was received for um, the CIPP pipelining at Pheasant Branch. All right, we have a motion. Is there a second to Kendra's motion? This is Carrie Schaffner. I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on this item? Uh, hearing none, those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and we will so recommend to the council that we reject the bid. And visit it again next year, perhaps. Well, we're going to hopefully maybe try what Tony said. We might be able to try maybe mid-spring or a little bit towards the end of spring. Uh, he says once he finds out information from the companies that he's reaching out to. So. Okay, that's fine. Good. All right. I think that's everything you have of uh, interest on the agenda, Tom. You're certainly welcome to stay, but you're also welcome to leave. I get it. Um, okay, sounds good. Thanks. Been a long day. <laughs> yeah. uh, so we can move on to seven. Will rehab acceptance of a proposal. We have uh, utility manager Dave Sarbacher with us tonight on the call. Um, Ryan Wood, Strand Associates, got uh, solicited for proposals. I think there were three, if I remember right. And uh, there was only one math error, but it didn't affect the lowest priced proposal. Um, and the, uh, the lowest priced proposal that was submitted is uh, just within our budget allocation from the water utility funds. Is there anything you wanted to overview or add, Dave? Uh, no, other than the Kohoi, excuse me, the Kohoi group that got this one is going to be a new company that we'll work with, but Strand has worked with them, other projects throughout the state. That's a good point. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Nope. You go ahead, Bob. All right. I, I just wondered on this one, uh, this company we have not worked with in the past, Cahoy. We have not done anything in Middleton, correct. Okay. Do we know anything about co companies from Iowa, as I recall? Do we know anything about uh, the company? Because the next lowest bid was within $2,000 of uh, this bid. And I, is that was that bid from somebody that we've worked with before? 
Um, the other three bids we had worked with those companies over the past several years, but um, like I say, Strand has worked with this group before on other projects throughout the state, and so they're familiar with with their work. Okay, well, if you're satisfied that uh, they're equipped to do the job, I guess that's fine. I have a similar question, Bob, of Carrie. The other three were, looks like they're Wisconsin-based companies. Do we give any preference to working with more local companies? You know, on, on proposals for, frankly, construction kinds of things, I don't know. Uh, you know, it's not a bid per se, but but we've always said if it's the lowest qualified contractor, uh, that's been our recommendation. I don't know if we have any leeway it being a proposal instead of a bid. You could do it if you stated that in the specifications that there would be a preference to a local contractor. And set some guidelines for that. Yeah, I don't know that we did that. Do you know offhand, Dave, if we did that? Not that I'm aware of. Yeah, no, me I, either. I don't think we typically don't get that specific and being told to. Right. I think they would have wanted some guidance, and I don't remember that conversation. And even that, before. they would have said, "Really?" <laughs> it seems a little sketchy. Yeah. Because yeah, my question is, if you put that in there then aren't you just inviting those absolutely companies to jack up their price then? Yeah, absolutely. So I, that's kind of self-defeating. Yeah. yeah. And, well, and one of our goals, of course, with the public is not to play favorites. It's, right. you know, it is what it is. Yep. I mean, it would be nice to use local companies, though. There's something about reputation and name of, you know, I know we've done that with uh, vehicle purchases. If Middleton Ford is a couple hundred dollars more than somebody that's far, far away, um, that we've made that recommendation, but not on something that's construction related that I can recall. All yeah. right. Flight Group is not exactly sponsoring a little league team. This one also has to go to finance and common council. It will. Yep. I make that recommendation that we accept a little bit of Kahoy Group for the Well 4 Rehab uh, Proposal 23-109 in the amount of $134,174. We have a motion. Is there a second to Don's motion? I will this second. This is Kendra. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on this item? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and that will be our recommendation of the Finance Committee and the Council then. All right. Five year street improvement plan. Thanks, Dave. Have a good night. Thank you, David. Thanks. Uh, right, so the five-year street improvement plan, Sean Allsrud, uh, as he does every spring, put in a lot of work trying to balance a lot of different criteria, um, look at the last five-year plan, pull things forward that hadn't been funded, uh, and put things together in a way that, uh, that we can uh, uh, keep within the cap of, of our internal target of $2 million a year. So he balanced all of that and, and then put a couple of notes in here that I wanted to touch base on, uh, although the committee, of course, might have other input. One is that in uh, 2024, which would be next year's uh, plan listing, the library parking lot is listed by Sean as an option for funding consideration. At the budget in uh, August, the committee had uh, bumped it and said, you know, with the downtown civic campus planning, let's not think about that till 2024 instead of 2023. Um, I can, I, I uh, want to report back that, um, you know, I still don't know enough about the downtown civic campus planning to know what year that might be programmed in, or even if it's programmed. Um, so I don't, I don't have any 
better information to share with the committee about the potential timing. If we were to redo the parking lot, might it get you know torn out in two years or 15 years? I, I just, I don't know. So that's one issue is if, if we wanted to include it in the plan in a specific year, we'd wanna give Sean direction on that, which would of course bump something else. Uh, and then the second issue is the county very recently uh, asked us uh, to consider a joint project funding to the tune of $600,000 in 2026 to resurface Century Avenue east of Parminter Street, from Parminter Street all the way out to West Point Road uh, at the end of the city limits. Uh, it's over by County Park. There's that little church kind of right at the corner, uh, just east of the County Park. Uh, so that'd be the end of the city limits. Um, we previously had had Century Avenue on as a joint resurfacing project, but we pulled it for local needs. Um, and uh, I, I think in the meantime, everyone knows it hasn't gotten better. So I'm not at all surprised that the county reached out and said, we'd love to program this with you in your budget, but we didn't have it in our five-year plan. So this would introduce it into the five-year plan if the committee directs. Then do we take it over? We do not. In the meantime, the state changed the law that bump the population threshold from 500,000 in the urbanized area to 750,000, which buys us some time. Uh, I'm not familiar with that, Sean. What does that? Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> there was a state law uh, for quite a while that said when the urbanized uh, area of Madison uh, and surrounding urbanized area, gets to a population threshold of 500,000 people, the counties can effectively decommission county highways and hand them to the municipalities for ownership, which is a big part of why the city of Middleton funded uh, a joint project, two joint projects to reconstruct University Avenue because we were bumping against that threshold. The writing was on the wall. It was the best deal we could get get but we got university avenue with it uh and so that's our road now the majority of it is our road now um in the meantime shortly after that the uh, state legislature uh bumped up that threshold to seven hundred and fifty thousand, and so that uh that sword has been removed a little bit further from our heads and uh so we still would need to pursue a joint project to get this done but at the end of it, we don't have to take uh, jurisdictional authority for that road. Sorry. Just out of curiosity, <laughs> how do they measure the urbanized area? What do they look at? Well, I'm not in charge of that. It's a good question. I don't know what the shape of that is, um, but I think the way Madison and Middleton have kind of grown together, it's all one big glob, you know, now, so. I Sean, I, this is Sean Elser. Uh, I think my recollection was that it was the county, when the county reached a threshold of 500,000, that municipalities over 20,000 would then fall in to that criteria. Ooh. Okay, maybe I remembered that incorrectly. But again, now the threshold has been raised to 750,000, so I don't think in any of our time we're going to have to worry about that so but it's a measure of the entire population of dane county rather than some subset of dane county i if i remember correctly it's been a few years but i my recollection was that it went by county um and they pulled that in part because it affected mainly milwaukee and dane county were the only two counties i believe that is correct good to know thanks sean i must Thank you, sean. about the mpo So is that a 50%, 50-50 cost sharing, 600,000? It is, yeah. Okay. And they wanna do that in 26? Correct, yep. And we have some stuff too that we'd like to get done. I jotted into the uh, staff notes. We have some older water pipe that we'd like to get replaced. Uh, we have some traffic signal conduit uh, that we'll need to get replaced. Uh, so entirely, 
related but different subject. Is that an opportunity to be able to do anything with the intersection of Allen Boulevard and Century Avenue? Uh, conceivably, if we can get it designed, yeah, for what we would want it to be, the pedestrian crossings there are are really it, difficult. It's that's the worst intersection we have in the city. It's yeah. a nightmare. So, so we, if, I, I think that if that's possible, that we can get that into the design and we can work in conjunction with Dane County, that we should make that a high priority. And I think we would have to design it in advance of this because the county is pursuing this really as a resurfacing project. Um, and I could see the contractor taking on the, the shifting of island locations, but we'd have to do the signal uh, moving and all that stuff. Um, but we'd have to get a design started sooner. But that would be the time to do it. Yeah, I think that'd be a great time to do it. Because yeah, traffic yeah. controls at least in place. Yeah, I, I, I think mm -hmm. that's how, an absolute must. How long does it take to design something like that? Like two years? Mm -hmm. I mean, are we talking no? No, it's not that complicated, but probably I mean doing it the year ahead would be nice. So okay. if we could get design funded in 25, that would be handy. Yeah, we should pursue that. Agreed. Okay. So I'll, I don't know if the committee wants to make a motion about adding this funding into 26 and bumping something else, or if you want to just direct staff to do that as part of an overall motion. And then secondarily, there's that question about the library parking lot. And I, there's one other comment that I have. If this revised 2023, uh, five-year plan shows Pleasant View Road as 2028. It's just got the red on it from the previous year. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's not on the list, so. It's it's, it's not. Uh, just need to eliminate the red from Pleasant View Road. Yeah, I apologize. So the way <laughs> the coloring system works, um, 28, <laughs> Say 2027 is in the light blue. That will all that light blue will always stay with 2027. And so next year, the 2029 would be green. So that is a remnant that I didn't remove. So I apologize for that. I'll get that removed. Yeah, it'd be disappointing to rebuild it in 2028 again. It would be. <laughs> yeah. It may not be done by 2028. <laughs> You'd have to have another public hearing. Oh yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> so Sean, um, the the Civic Campus group, I think that they've started to meet again. That's what I've heard. I, yeah. I believe that they're they're starting to meet and talk again. Um, Actually, Sean, you're part of that group, right? Uh, yeah, I'll be getting more into it once they once they move forward a little bit okay i don't have uh, new information okay so um I, gu I guess i have the same thought that we did last august is that until we know something a little bit more definitive as far as timing goes i'm not sure that we want to spend two hundred thousand dollars on a project that may get tore out in a few years where that money could be spent someplace else sure okay yeah, no, I think that's fine direction. So is it one of the, so, and that's that's unallocated right now, right? That 200,000, that's not included in the 763 for 2024? Correct. Okay. Yeah, so that's not, I mean, this, it's just adding up sort of, I'm sorry, this left column. Okay. And Sean just put that in as a placeholder in case we wanted to add it. I think. Yeah, so it's not like we could move something from 2026 to make room for. So. Yeah, so the, the library parking lot, I'll just remove off of the list for this year. Um, the 2026, uh, that is that 600,000 is not included in those totals. What I would suggest is that we remove the Mendota Avenue and Lakeview Boulevard and push that. Um, it just dawned on me, I, and then Dave jumped off. I would want to check with Dave on the water utility side of that, but those two streets are grayed together. 
And that means that it's a re partial resurface and partial reconstruction. But the total of those two um, would, removal of those would cover the 600,000 for Century Avenue. And then I would just push those down further on the list. Sorry, could you repeat which those were? You said Lakeview? Uh, the two great out there, Mendota Avenue. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong. It's too small. Oakwood, Oakwood Place and Lakeview Boulevard. That's in 2026? Yes. So if we added Century Avenue onto the 2026, then we would suggest taking those two streets off. I don't and, see those on in 2026. Um, so right at the top. So Lakeview Boulevard oh, okay, listed at Lakeview Boulevard's listed at four hundred and sixty-two thousand dollars, and Oakwood Place is listed at fifty-six thousand so dollars. So that's a little over five hundred. Yeah. yeah, and we could take the um, the other resurfacings below there, Sean. Overlook yeah. Pass, Hubbard. Right, in here. Those are, yeah, and I think that, yeah, that would have brought us over. Threshold. So we're short, uh, we're short how much? <laughs> 100,000. 100,000? Yeah. Budget might be up that much by then. Yeah, that's a, it's a few years out. Um, you know, in the, the blocks of roads that you see there together, those are clumped by neighborhood. And we take a lot of effort to try and group those roads together. So we're only going in one year resurfacing and then leaving. We're not coming back two years later and disrupting the neighborhood again. Mm -hmm. Could you take, oh. What would be your recommendation then to make up that hundred thousand? What about? I would say, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Nothing. It's not enough. Okay. Um, I guess what Sean and I had looked at earlier was Lakeview Boulevard, Oakwood Place, and then the other four resurfacings below there: Overlook, Hubbard, and Countryside. And I think that got us there. Let me see. That should be more than. Yeah, comfortably more than enough. Although if we're doing a bunch of signal and island work, um, 600 is not the right number anyway. Mm. So, but if you take those three, it would give you, what does that add up to? Would that give you enough? Um, that would give an extra, in ballpark numbers, $80,000. Yeah. So that should, that should work for design work. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Right. But that still leaves you 100 short for the 600, right? Well, if we do Lakeview oh, no, at 460, over, okay. Oakwood at 56, you know, then we're at 510-ish. Okay, um, and then you're good. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, then the 89 gets us to about six, and then we end up with another 80 or 90 for okay. islands and signals. Yeah, I just don't think that we can pass up the opportunity to be able to do something with Century Avenue and potentially clean up that intersection. I agree that should be a priority. All right. Do you need a motion to that effect or just a recommendation to the uh, to Sean to come back with it? Yeah, I think if you would, uh, in, in the form of a motion, maybe even just provide direction that we'd like to pursue the Century Avenue project in 26, but that would bump Lakeview and all of the planned resurfacings. Um, but then defer the library parking lot resurfacing until we know more about the schedule of the downtown Civic Campus and uh, remove the coloring from Pleasant View Road that's currently on the map. All that rolled into one motion should take care of it. And in the motion, do you need, to, need the recommendation to do, do design work on the intersection that do you need that as part of the motion? Well, we'd want to do that in 25, but um, I think you think about that. We would, we would, as we're programming the budgets, 
we, we look a year ahead. So we think, okay, if that's a project that we're interested in building in 26, already we have um, programmed in, in 25, we're gonna ask for that design money. Because I like, I like the paper trail of having it in the motion so that the idea okay. continues forward. Sure, did you get all those notes, Sean? Because I'll make that motion. <laughs> yeah. All right. I knew that was good. That was really good. <laughs> Ann, would you read your motion back, please? Have a revise it, and then we can make a motion. <laughs> if it's wrong, we'll it. correct you in a minute. Next two weeks. There you, go. there you go. I'll go to the videotape. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's my motion. Okay. <laughs> All right. We have a motion. I I will second that. All right. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and so we're we... not going to see it again. Then it'll go on unless to we the request it. <laughs> plan commission, yeah, right. Okay, exactly. Uh, but it'll go to the plan commission, then to the finance committee, then to the oh, it goes to plan commission. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yes. Um, and then another side question: um, as we we revise these, and we've talked about at bike and ped, we've talked about um, being able to. Uh, bike and pet having some input into this into the five-year plan oh, yeah. mm -hmm. at what point and and sean was on the elsewhere was on the at the last um at, at the last meeting when when should this get referred to them then uh, i guess i'm trying to figure out how the timing yeah. would be where they would have input um into what the project's going to look like mm -hmm. before the bidding starts right so I'm well, not sure that this is the right time, but I'm questioning yeah. it to when the right time is. Sure. So, Sean, do you want me to take that one? Uh, yeah, dive in. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> What's the so, uh, so I've had conversations with uh, Mark Opitz, who's on the Bike Ped Committee. Um, the Bike Ped Committee is going to take a more active role in uh, reviewing the five-year plan. So what I'll do is once the five-year plan for this year is approved, I will forward that on to Mark Opitz, and then he and I will sit down and just go over the uh, scope of work for each area. And then he can take that to the bike head committee. So we're asking that they look at least two years out uh, and bring recommendations back at least a year before construction begins so that we can add that. On something like Allen Boulevard and Century Avenue, um, that would probably be a larger scope of work, uh, and they may want more input, so we would extend that time. Sounds great. Thanks, Sean. You bet. <clears throat> Excuse me. Any uh, further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. <clears throat> Excuse me again. The, um, the eyes have it, and that's what we how we will proceed. <clears throat> Bring newsletter. Right. Uh, so Casey Weber, uh, our new uh, uh, public works assistant, put this together. Uh, and checked out the links, told me everything works. I didn't click on everything. She's good. Um, so, so that's why it's here to the committee, uh, unless there are changes or edits to recommend. We normally just put that on the city's website. Can we take a quick look at it? Uh, sure. Sean, I had a couple of little minor. Sure. Is there a starting with in this issue? We should do major public works projects for 2023, not for 2022. We don't want to review those again, I assume. Be easier. Let me see if that got changed in here and not in the uh, title. I think it did get huh. done there. It's just <laughs> <laughs> so we almost got that right. The, the index there, okay. Yeah, Sean, the links weren't working for me, but it might just be the PDF copy that you put in the agenda, I'm not sure. 
yeah. Oh, I wonder, because they they did work on my PDF copy. I wonder if OnBase does something goofy with them. It might, yeah. Shoot, I'll verify that though as, before we post it. All right, I had one more minor uh, question under sidewalk obstructions, wherever that is in this newsletter. Let me just, sorry, it's catch okay. a note here. Okay. Uh, sidewalk obstructions. Huh. We'll have to change the Dan Cotter reference. He, uh, he left us last Friday. Well, okay. I didn't catch that one, but down below, um, <laughs> got city forester, Mark Wagner. Um, I don't know if he's the person you want, still want contacted uh regarding sidewalk obstructions but he's not the city forester anymore is he has a different title he's not but i think he still prefers to look into those kinds of things even though tony crom is the city forester okay. well i didn't know if you wanted to change the name or change the title but um one or the other might want to be done for clarity yeah i, I wasn't sure either if he just wanted to be called that for purposes of the public, so it's not as confusing, but I'll, I'll verify that. Okay, that was all I had. Okay. I had a question under leaf collections. That's the last page. Yeah. I was wondering if, if we could just say something like curbside collection of leaves and yard, yard waste will resume on April 3rd and end on April 24th or something, because I think I, when I first glanced at it, I was like, oh, okay, leaf collection will start back up on April 3rd. And then I kind of stopped reading. Mm. I just wonder if people will assume leaf collection happens throughout the summer. Uh, well, huh, that's weird because the way our policy is written, it just says we pick this stuff up in April. The problem is, you know, April 29th at 1159, people put stuff out and then they call and yell like, why isn't that getting picked up? And so I think Brad has tried to give advance warning on these kinds of things to say, hey, have it on the curb by this date if you for sure want it picked up. We might get it if you put it out the 25th or 26th or whatever. I don't know what the weekends are, but but that's um, that's the genesis of this kind of note. Uh, okay. We'll pick it up in April, but if it's not out in a timely way, we might not be able to get it. And I know that's been frustrating all around where the residents are like, hey, it's still April. Right, right. We don't have a section in here on reporting a problem. I'm just wondering if we should link to the um, request tracker website page just to... let, me, let me just pin this down first though on the oh, yeah is there a better way to say this because that's what's happening here i don't right. know exactly well, if you scroll back up to the brush collection i thought that was really like i think it was maybe in bold or something oh yeah once a month through april through october i was just wondering if it could somehow say like leaf collection We'll start April 3rd and I don't know, maybe it's okay. I think I just was like, hmm. You could reason. say we'll start April 3rd and end the end of April to ensure that your leaves are picked up. Please have them windrowed by the, and at the curb by April 24th. Yeah. It's, yeah. That's what it's after, right? I mean, brush is on a schedule. If it's not out by that Monday, it's not getting picked up that week. Well, maybe. Right. There's no promise. Leaves are completely without schedule so right yeah let me take a closer maybe look maybe it's fine i think i just i think i like somehow bolding it right like maybe that's all it needs needed um just so that people say like oh okay it's it's only the month of april uh right that's the real take home 
Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll work on that a bit. Okay. Not too long, because pretty soon we'll be doing it. Yeah, and don't worry if it's, if, I don't know, maybe it's minor. Like I said, I just, for some reason, it was like, it caught me off guard. I couldn't, I guess I just didn't remember that it was just April. Yeah. Yeah, I, we get that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> if we get the snow off in some time in April, we'll be doing our... <laughs> Okay, sorry, Kendra, you were no, about the uh, report my, problem. My, pro my apologies, because, and maybe this, I mean, this is very specific to, well, I don't know, it's kind of an, what it encompasses, but I was just looking around at our, just thinking of ways that we might include information about how people can contact the city if they have an issue about any of this kind of stuff. And it took me to the request tracker page. Um, mm. And just wondering if we might include a section of like, you know, if you have any other issues, just a link to that website. Because it can, I was just thinking about a call that I got regarding a, an animal, a deer that was hit on the side of the road. Um, obviously this, it, that falls within the public works purview and this is more of a recycling and breast collection and more of the streets sweeping kind of thing but i'm just wondering if there shouldn't be some link somewhere that and that's been kind of difficult anyhow because it's yeah it's a little bit sort of between us and dnr but it's disposal of these things that becomes a real issue yeah well and there's also i mean i'm just looking at our request tracker page you can report a pothole refuse a recycling traffic concern that kind of runs the gamut i just know that when you fill out the form it goes you know it pings to casey or whomever in the public work is receiving it and they can funnel it the right way yeah, okay. Um, but I just did a quick document search and there is no report a problem on this document. So if there was just a way to link that. So if someone were to come across this document before finding this web page, they would have a couple different ways of getting to this. Because this is kind of difficult to find. I know people have found it, but I've also had a hard time finding it myself. So. Oh, yeah, I usually just type it into the search bar and it gets me close. Yeah. But if you don't know that it's <coughs> okay, yeah, I think we could. Uh, well, we certainly have the space. We could add something, uh, just a little blurb and a little. Yeah, just if you know, if there's any other questions about it, or if you'd like to report a problem, contact information and the website. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. <clears throat> any other edits? or the spring newsletter. <clears throat> you need a motion, Sean, to with those edits to proceed to send it out or are you good? Yeah, we usually do that, yep. All right, someone would like to offer a motion. This is Kendra, I'll make a motion that with the edits that we've been discussing that we approve the spring newsletter for 2023. Is there a second to Kendra's motion? This is Carrie, I'll second. Oh, sorry, Carl did. Oh, sorry, didn't hear it. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and we have a spring newsletter ready to go to press or something similar. Great. Uh, so then the last thing on I, without bringing the agenda back up is really about a discussion, uh, on the committee's preferences for virtually meeting or, uh, if in, if the committee's preference is to be in person, then, uh, whether somebody connected virtually would count as quorum and for voting purposes. And did you all get the, uh, email I sent with, uh, the ordinance that was recently passed. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Why are these minutes on the? This was the last time the committee discussed this in June of 2021, and um, so so this I 
included really just as a reminder for what the committee had previously discussed because it was a long time ago. So and it in, included some bullet items of the thinking at the time. Uh, but, but there's some flexibility and options here for the committee as a whole and for individual members too. So the base question is for the committee is whether the committee wants to start meeting in person. I mean, I, I think that's the first question. <clears throat> and you mean that not in a hybrid setting, just exclusively in person? Well, actually, that's a sub question, I think, yeah. to what Dan mentioned, because we we might want to consider, even if the committee's largely meeting in person or entirely intending to meet in person, we may still want to offer a Zoom option for people that don't want to come in here. And, and I think with the, sorry, with the nature of what we discussed, I think that's a welcome thing for the public and far as far as being able to attend without having to sit and attend, they can kind of watch. Right. So I, I think even if the committee wants to meet in person or mostly in person, hybrid is probably how we'll do that. And I, and that and that and that was our our intention at, at council. But also, if for whatever reason somebody could make a meeting, um, even if we were meeting in person, a committee member they could they could attend. Um, through the zoom through the high hybrid mm -hmm. but I, I think every committee is now asking themselves um you know for well the pandemic's over so it, do we wish to get back to what is our normal way of doing things what was our normal way of doing things and meeting in person um, other than those those who can't for whatever reason um I think we, I think we had this discussion a while back, and I thought, uh, I, I thought we were all kind of leaning towards coming back in person. Um, well, actually, let me. Uh, I mean, sometime after twenty one, I, I think there wasn't there a period of time when we. I don't think we talked about it here, at least not on this committee, not since I've joined. Yeah. Yeah, so I, the only time I could think that the Public Works Committee talked about this was in June of 2021, and the consensus at the time was to continue with virtual meetings until we figured out how technology worked, in which case the committee was interested in revisiting the issue of hybrid meetings. So there wasn't really any specific direction, and we met in person, well, we met in hybrid a couple of times conference room B, um, but then we sort of uh, needed to leave again because of a flare up, I think, of, of COVID um, and haven't really reconvened in person since then. So. How do you at home find the setup right now? I think it's working really well. And that's partially why I wanted to stay here tonight. I just was like, hmm, this will be a good kind of test case. Um, I can hear you all well. I can see the screen. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm wondering, like, maybe we just keep it. I, I guess almost like if there's a lot of people that want to meet in person, um, maybe we just do this hybrid option. Does hybrid work in conference room B like it does out here? It's a different setup but it has a fisheye lens for the table. Uh, and then I use the projector for the screen. So you don't have all individual screens or individual mics or anything like that. Frankly, for me, it's a lot easier than setting up this room was. Oh, is it? Because I- This took some effort. And I've attended meetings, not as a participant, it was just um, <clears throat> uh, observing from one that was in conference room B that was a hybrid and it was not a good experience as far as just observing it. Um, but I think it was because of the audio, because there wasn't individual mics. It was hard to, and it was hard to discern who was speaking 
because of the way the fish islands didn't get everybody who was in the room. And so there were, it okay. was, a, it was, it was a big meeting. It was one of the um, first times that the downtown campus committee had met since COVID. And so it was, um, there was a lot to discuss. So it was just, but it was, it was not the best experience. I did hear from Drew that he's interested in moving some of the components around in B to improve that experience. Okay. I, they already did put a, um, you know, one of those conference phone pucks out in the middle of the table yeah. because of some of the audio stuff. So I'm assuming that resolved that issue, but the lens really needs to be further from the table. Yeah. And to do that is going to take some, I don't know if it's cabinetry work or mounting work, but then the projector screen needs to move. It, these dominoes sort of keep falling. And in the meantime, his real focus was, well, how do we get the council chambers to work? Yeah. Uh, so he put B off to the side and said, it functions uh, even if it's not great. Um, and the council chambers needs to function. So, uh, so I think that's coming, uh, you know, and, and again, it works, um, but the goal is to make it better. That's good to know, Kendra, because yeah, this, I was really impressed with the audio, but it's probably like you said, because there's individual mics. Yeah. In two weeks, do we have another public hearing? We do, so. We'll uh, be back in here. Just to be inviting to the public, I thought it was important that at least I show up and be here. Um, okay. So we can all see each other regardless of where we are. Um, but yeah, that still leaves uh, a lot of discretion for the committee on, on where you want to be. Um, and again, I, I think regardless, when we say in person, I, what I'm hearing really is hybrid. I don't think we're ditching the computers and going back to the way things were. So, so that opens up that second question then is, if individual members uh, want to be remote, uh, let's say the committee says, let's meet in person, right? Well, the door is still pretty wide open for an individual member then to make a choice based on where they are or what's going on uh, or whether they're feeling ill uh, to still participate fully just remotely. Mm -hmm. And they would- Or you could just say it's the preference is to meet in person. With, with the choice of, of right, up. Yeah. yeah, to express it that way. Because again, I, I, I think it's going to be virtual anyhow. Um, even if all of the committee members are here, I think I'm still going to have a computer turned on. Yes, I think for open meetings that makes the best. I think that's the best way to do it. But that's so for the for the general public, then they would always have an option to tune in uh, virtually to a meeting, whether uh, all the committee members were present uh, in the council chambers for the meeting or not, the public could still tune in virtually. Is that accurate? That's how I'm envisioning it, right. And I wouldn't know that until game day if anybody actually tried dialing in or not. Um, so I think we'd have to publish it that way and set it up that way, just in case somebody wants to join us remotely. And committee members would have the option of participating remotely for any number of a variety of decent reasons, I guess. Is that it's accurate? It's a committee decision, as I understand the ordinance, that the committee can decide that individual members can count toward quorum and uh, participate fully and vote if their video screen is turned on. Right. I, th I think that's a good solution personally. I do too. I, I think we should off like that would be my preference is to I'm, I'm, like I'm I don't have strong opinions about being in person. Um, but if that's what the committee wants to do, then I think offering that hybrid option of for both public and committee members, I think works well. Because like you were saying, Sean, let's say I'm just not feeling that well, but I'm well enough to attend. It's kind of nice to be able to attend virtually, then, you know, not getting anyone else sick. 
Yeah, and and where it might get a little bit weird is if I suddenly get ill. Um, as as the only person who knows know, how to run that, <laughs> I may have to reach out to you all and say, you know what? It seems like tonight it's only Zoom. Um, you know, mm-hmm. we have that option because we we have it all. So if that's the case, then that's what that's what we do. The only the only caveat that I would have to it would be nice is if the committee members would like. <laughs> Excuse me. If they're showing up in person, because I'd hate for all the committee members to decide that they were staying home that night, he'd be the only one that had to come in. The only guy. <laughs> but well, you still have the public, though. Yeah. That right. you don't know. And they could show up. But if at any meeting. Yeah. Okay. Because we don't, I was looking over the minutes. Do we normally, without a public hearing, do we normally invite public comment? We don't have that section on our minutes. No, it's not a specific thing, but it's chair discretion. And, okay. And the chair has, for a very long time, invited public involvement. Yeah, it's not like we're secret. No. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. So I, I guess that's a good question, though. Let's say, like, I, I think, I don't think this is where we're headed, but let's say everyone's like, nope, I want to stay um, uh, remote, right? Then we just wouldn't change anything of what we're doing. We just keep it how we have been the last two years. Well, we would we would want to take a vote on that. I think as a yeah, um, just but to... I mean like so then the public we wouldn't advertise that we're back. It's so like the I guess I'm just trying to think like if we do go back in person, then we tell the public come to conference room B or attend via Zoom. Exactly. Okay. Well, an example would be inclement weather, right? one of the snow days that we had in the past week, if we know we got six inches of snow between noon and six. Zoom, so we don't have to cancel. Right, and which is nice because you're not delaying the business of that meeting for another two weeks until we can get back on a public notice. But if we've already public noticed that it's hosted here. Yeah, I still need to come. Right. You do. But that doesn't seem. Fair. Fair. Yeah, Fair. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, we do because it's I can't in good conscience have the public in here and just you, the staff member in here. Well, you'd be on the on the uh, video feed. Yeah, well, that's not gonna work. Not for me. That's okay. personal. Sorry, for that's me. personal, but yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. the that's the beauty of having that flexibility. Agree. Yeah. I just think if, if the public is in the room, then more committee members should be in the room. Right, and and I can appreciate somebody else might have a different set of yep. uh, concerns and reach a different conclusion. And, and I think having flexibility that way is really good. So if we stay with the flexibility going either way, with a preference in person, but it's up to the individual. Mm-hmm. Then we have to make the decision, is that individual then not present still counted in the quorum? That's the second decision. Okay. Yep. So I would, can we, do we need a motion for that? I think we should as a committee decide so, that. I think the ordinance allows the chair to just say so, but in talking with Bob, I think he's more comfortable having the committee make this decision. Well, I would say then let's leave it flexible, prefer in person, but if someone can't make it to the meeting, they would be acceptable as part of the quorum okay. if they're remote. That and would with, be my motion. And with their video on. Yeah, yeah and, and with, with their video, video on, yep. yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. That's fine. Second, second to Don's motion then. <clears throat> I'll make that second. Thank you. Thank you for the motion and the second, because that relieves me of the awesome burden of having to make the decision by myself. I'd much prefer that you to participate in it. So that when the bullets start to fly, I won't be the only target. I'm just glad that Bob's here today to handle the public hearing, you know, because <laughs> I've been left holding the bag quite a bit. It's been two weeks. <laughs> All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Oh, I had a thought and I lost it. Oh, wait, hold on. 
Hold on a second. I had a thought, but I lost it. Now I can't remember what it was. It was not a bit important. If it, if it is, it'll come back and we'll talk. I'll figure it out. It's done. <laughs> All right. Any further discussion? I would say too. Yeah. This does not have to be for all time. This oh, is... that's what that was going to be. Thank you. Yes, that was going to be my comment. Is that as the as the makeup of the committee will change, I don't know if we need to include in the motion anywhere about when we would revisit this plan. I, I probably agenda. wouldn't revisit it until somebody in the committee says, "Hey, let's talk about that again." Okay. You should be yeah. able to revisit it any time you want to revisit it. Anytime the committee feels it's necessary to revisit it, they can revisit it, I would think. I added it to my motion, Bob, that until a committee decides to revisit it. All right. Uh, is that acceptable to the second? I'm good yeah. with that. Yeah. yeah, she's good with that. Yeah. Okay. Any more and, discussion? Yeah, I have another question. Um, do we have to tell Sean ahead of time if we're attending in person or virtually? Not from my perspective, no. The only thought, my thought would be for quorum purposes. Well, we just decided virtual counts for quorum if your video's on. Okay. I guess, but if you were taking, like if a bunch of people said, well, no, I guess. I'm just thinking with RSVPs. Do you get RSVPs please, when you people? I, I do get some. I, I don't do anything with them. It's okay. just, that's the nature of Outlook. It sends this thing out and, okay. and begs people to hit a button. Okay. Um, I didn't know if you tracked them just to make sure that you could, if we weren't getting a quorum, you would. I usually appreciate an email. So, and people are okay. really good on this committee about telling me, hey, in two weeks, I won't be here. Okay. Um, you know. So that hasn't been an issue. No, okay. that's been really helpful. Okay. Yeah. It could be a game time decision for people. Okay. <laughs> I would say, is that okay with you, Sean? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, so if we're in person, that means That's fine, sure. here, regardless of whether any or all of you are here. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And Bob's okay with that as the chair? Yes. Okay. And I think it's, I mean, I think it's good. And I think without any formal action or anything, we've always, uh, members of the committee have always let Sean know uh, if they're not going to be able to attend the meeting so that he has some assessment of whether or not we're going to have a quorum and uh, go ahead with the meeting. So, I, and I assume that would just continue out of general courtesy toward Sean and your fellow committee members. And then if it does become a problem with any future committee makeup, then it can be addressed then. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And you all are really good about that. that any good. further discussion yeah. on the motion? We, Carrie had something. Oh, Carrie? no, I was just saying, that I think that sounds good. That's that always been my assumption is that will be here unless we tell Sean not to. So I think I think that sounds good. We just kind of proceed that you'll be attending either virtually or in person and, and let Sean know if you won't be there. I think that makes that works. All right. Okay. Now are we ready to vote? Mm -hmm. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it and we will proceed accordingly. That brings us to the magic hour here. Well, I will make a motion that we adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. Second. Brahim Zeal, second. Motion and a second to adjourn. Any discussion? Hearing none, those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and we stand adjourned until March. 27th, I guess. 27th, right. And then we have another public hearing. So uh, I'm planning it exactly in this setup. And, and Sean, I already let you know that I will not be here on the 27th. Yes, yes, you did. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. And hopefully on the 27th, I will be there in person. But I wasn't able to do it. All right. We stand adjourned then. Thank you, everyone. Very good. Thank you. Yep. Got a lot done tonight. I don't know.